Hello, viewers. Hydrail, or the hydrogen trains, are zero-emission multiple units, or ZMUs, which is a generic term describing rail vehicles powered by hydrogen as the primary fuel. These vehicles, large or small, use onboard hydrogen fuel as a source of energy to power the traction motors, or the auxiliaries, or both. Hydrail vehicles use the chemical energy of hydrogen for propulsion by reacting hydrogen with oxygen in a fuel cell to run electric motors as the hydrogen fuel cell train. Widespread use of hydrogen for fueling rail transportation is a basic element of the proposed hydrogen economy. Hydrail vehicles are usually hybrid vehicles with renewable energy storage, such as batteries or supercapacitors, for regenerative braking, improving efficiency, and lowering the amount of hydrogen storage required. Potential hydrail applications include all types of rail transport like the commuter rail, passenger rail, freight rail, light rail, rail rapid transit, mine railways, industrial railway systems, trams, and special rail rides at parks and museums. The term hydrail is believed to date back to August 22, 2003, when Stan Thompson gave a presentation entitled The Mooresville Hydrail Initiative. However, according to Stan Thompson and Jim Bowman, the term first appeared in print on February 17, 2004 in the International Journal of Hydrogen Energy as a search engine target word to enable scholars and technicians around the world working in the hydrogen rail area to publish and locate all work produced within the discipline more easily. During the 2010s, both fuel cells and hydrogen generation equipment have been taken up by several transport operators across various countries, such as China, Germany, Japan, Taiwan, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Many of the same technologies that can be applied to hydrail vehicles can be applied to other forms of transport as well, such as road vehicles. Now, let us talk about the technology. Hydrogen is a common and easy-to-find element, given that each molecule of water has two atoms of hydrogen for every oxygen atom present. Hydrogen can be separated from water via several means, including steam reforming, normally involving the use of fossil fuels, and electrolysis, which requires large amounts of electricity and is less commonly used. Once isolated, hydrogen can serve as a form of fuel. It has been proposed that hydrogen for fueling hydrail vehicles can be produced in individual maintenance depots, requiring only a steady supply of electricity and water. It can then be pumped into pressurized tanks upon the vehicle. The development of lighter and more capable fuel cells has increased the viability of hydrogen-powered vehicles, which are efficient and sustainable. To put some numbers, the efficiency of hydrogen fuel cells ranges between 40% to 60% with carbon emission of 8 to 10 kilograms of CO2e, whereas the efficiency of methane as a fuel is in between 30% to 40% with carbon emission of 29.8 kilograms of CO2e. Now, if hydrail is such a promising technology, then why it is only tried within Germany? Why it is not adopted in rest of the world? To understand that better, let us get deep into hydrail system. A key technology of a typical hydrogen propulsion system is the fuel cell. This device converts the chemical energy contained within the hydrogen to generate electricity, as well as water and heat. As such, a fuel cell would operate in a manner that is essentially inverse to the electrolysis process used to create the fuel, consuming pure hydrogen to produce electricity rather than consuming electrical energy to produce hydrogen, albeit incurring some level of energy losses in the exchange. Reportedly, the efficiency of converting electricity to hydrogen and back again is just beneath 30%, roughly like contemporary diesel engines. Compared to that for an EMU, the efficiency of end-to-end -end value chain, starting from thermal power plants, through the transmission system and then finally consumed by EMUs is roughly 40%. This will be higher in case of power from renewable sources. Overhead wire electrification costs are around 2 million euros per kilometer, so electrification is not a cost-efficient solution for routes with low traffic and battery and hydrail solutions may be alternatives. 
use of hydrogen propulsion on certain types of trains, such as freight locomotives or high-speed trains, is less attractive and more challenging than on lower-powered applications, such as shunting locomotives and MEMU. So perhaps the pressure to cut emissions within the railway industry is likely to play a role in stimulating demand for the uptake of hydrail. Whatever it might be, every new technology developed will find its application in one place or another. It is up to the judgment of the engineers to find the suitable place of application of the same for improving the lifestyle of the society. Thanks for watching this video till end. Hope you liked this video. If yes, then please click on the like button, give your valuable comments, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot.